بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> so brothers we reached um, this chapter here uh, last week we reached this chapter and we stopped here so inshallah <clears throat> we'll begin from this chapter as you can see we'll start from number seven here so the sheikh uh, he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala la yarda an yushraka ma'ahu fi ibadatihi ahadun so the sheikh just mentions here this is the title of the new chapter and it says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is not pleased with the one who associates partners in worship with him so this is clear and we've understood this from uh, the previous uh, chapter and from previous books that we studied as well that um, shirk and associating worship with Allah associating partners in worship with Allah that Allah is not pleased with that and whoever does that you know is um, uh, it's it's uh, if he falls into uh, shirk al-akbar, the greater shirk, then he's out of the fold of Islam and any actions and good deeds that he has gathered up until that point, they'll be cancelled. They'll basically imagine a bank balance of, let's say, for example, let's say you have 50,000 pounds worth of savings in your account. You wake up one morning at zero. Same kind of thing here. Same thing, just zero of the fold of Islam and if you haven't realized you're in even greater danger but if you've realized then you can ask for forgiveness as we discussed in previous books ask for forgiveness and you don't return to these kinds of things but the the thing is that you have to start all over again with the deeds so you know shirk very important to be aware of it so inshallah the shirk will explain to us in a better way regarding shirk so the shirk continues so he says al masalatu thaniyatu أن الله لا يرضى أن يشرك معه أحد غيره في إبادته. so the sheikh just mentions the same thing again. he says so the second affair or the second affair of discussion or the second point of discussion is that Allah is not pleased with uh, one who associates partners with him in worship and shares worship with other than Allah. Uh, so the sheikh continues and he says هذه المسألة المسألة متعلقة بالمسألة الأولى لأن الأولى هي بيان وجوب عبادة الله واتباع الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو معنى الشهادتين معنى شهادة 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 أن لا إله إلا الله وشهادة أن محمدا رسول الله والمسألة الثانية أن العبادة إذا خالتها شرك فإنها لا تقبل لأنه لا بد أن تكون الإبادة لا بد أن تكون الإبادة خالصة لوجه الله عز وجل. so what the sheikh is saying there so he says that the that this second affair of discussion that we're going to uh, um, discuss today and go through he says that this is linked to the first affair that we discussed in previous lessons and and the first as you remember the first affair it was to do with clarifying uh, the obligation of worshiping Allah and following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and 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 therefore, you know, the meaning of the shahada thing, the two shahadas, as in the meaning of the shahada, and la ilaha illallah, that there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the messenger of Allah, which is the second part of the testification. And so he says then the second uh, point of discussion of the second mas'ala, he says that um, it is um, um, about worship. So he says that it's, it's 
worship when um, if it's mixed, if it's if if the worship is mixed with shirk, then it does it's not accepted. So if if your worship is mixed with shirk or contains any type, any form of shirk, then it is not going to be accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so uh, the reasoning here is that because your worship has to be sincerely and purely for Allah's sake and for Allah, for the face of Allah azawajal, not sharing that worship with anything or anybody else. So then the Shaykh continues and says, فَمَنْ عَبِدَ اللَّهَ وَعَبِدَ مَعَهُ غَيْرَهُ فَإِبَادَتُهُ بَاطِلَ وَجُودُهَا كَعَدْمِهَا لِأَنَّ الْإِبَادَةَ لِأَنَّ الْإِبَادَةَ لَا تَنْفَعُ إِلَّا مَا لِخْلَاسِ وَالتَّوْحِيدِ فَإِذَا خَالَتَهَا شِرْكَ فَسَدَتْ كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ So we'll just stop there. So then the Shaykh says, says so whoever uh, worships Allah and then worships others besides him as well, then his worship is falsified, nullified. So it's as if we've seen this person worshipping by the same time, it's nothing. It's, it doesn't count towards anything. Because it's not accepted, it doesn't benefit this person. It doesn't benefit him because he is not doing it. He's not worshiping Allah upon the tawheed of Allah and with ikhlas, with sincerity and pureness, just for Allah and towards Allah. He's not worshiping towards Allah. He's sharing his worship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So then the Sheikh says, so if his uh, so if his worship is mixed with shirk, then it's corrupted. It's his worship has been corrupted. As Allah said in the ayah there that we've read, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in um, Surah Al-Zumar verse uh, 65. So if we go to verse 65 ourselves and read out the um, translation, we will see that the point being made here. So, and indeed it has been revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as it was to those Allah's messengers before you. If you join others in worship with Allah, then surely all your deeds will be in vain and you will certainly be among the losers. So that's very clear that for us to understand what we're talking about here and discussing. Then uh, the Shaykh continues and he mentions a few more ayahs and uh, uh, was evidences for our benefit as well. وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَلَوْ أَشْرَكُوا لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ الْأَنَامُ فَالْإِبَادَةُ لَا تُسَمَّى إِبَادَةٌ أَوْ إِبَادَةً إِلَّا مَعَ التَّوْحِيدِ كَمَا أَنَّ الصَّلَاةَ لَا تُسَمَّى صَلَاةً إِلَّا مَعَ طَهَارَةِ فَإِذَا خَالَتَ شِرْكُ وَالْإِبَادَةَ أَفْسَدَهَا كَمَا أَنَّ الطَّهَارَةَ إِذَا خَالَتَهَا نَاقِضٌ مِنْ نَوَاقِضِ الْوُضُوءِ أَفْسَدَهَا وَأَبْطَلَهَا وَلِهَذَا يَجْمَعُ اللَّهُ فِي كَثِيرٍ مِنَ الْآيَاتِ بَيْنَ الْأَمْرِ بِإِبَادَتِهِ وَالنَّهْيِ عَنِ الشِّرْكِ so uh, we'll just read that ayah that's there that the Shaykh began the, this new paragraph with and then we'll read the rest. So this is ayah from Surah Al-Anam verse 88. This is the guidance of Allah with which he guides who, whomsoever he wills of his slaves. For if they had joined in worship others with Allah all that they used to do would have been of no benefit to them. Uh, so that's clear for us as well. And the Shaykh then says, he says, so he says, worship isn't called worship except when it is with Tawheed. So we worship Allah upon Tawheed. That's called worship. He says, and then he compares it to the prayer. He says, just like the prayer, it, your prayer isn't actually a prayer without being Upon purification, so being pure, you know, as in being upon tahara and being, uh, you know, uh, uh, upon purification and ablution. And the Sheikh says, he says, for example, so he says, if um, if shirk is mixed with your or any of your worship is mixed with shirk, then it corrupts it. Shirk will corrupt your worship. It won't be worth anything. It's just a waste. And then the Shaykh continues and he says, just like 
uh, purification if anything of the nullifiers of wudu, for example, uh, are mixed with it or occur, then then your wudu is corrupted. And therefore, if you're upon wudu that is corrupted, that isn't actually wudu now, and you pray, your prayer won't be accepted because uh, one of the conditions of the prayer is to be upon ablution and to be upon purification. So the Sheikh gives us that example to help us to contrast um, uh, uh, with this and help us understand what's being mentioned here. So he says, so then the Sheikh says, and this is the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, has, has gathered uh, these ayat in the likes of these uh, verses that we're reading now uh, uh, regarding um, regarding uh, commands, commanding us with worshipping Allah or with worshipping Him and, uh, um, you know, you know, forbidding us from shirk and warning us from shirk and forbidding us from shirk. So pro prohibition of shirk and commanding us with worshipping Him upon Tawheed, of course. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, he mentions Rudaya, so he says, Qala Ta'ala, wa'budu Allaha wa la tushriku bihi shay'a. وَقَالَ وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَقَالَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ فقوله تعالى لا إله إلا أنا فيه أمران فيه نفي الشرك وفيه إثبات الإبادة, إثبات الإبادة لله تعالى so we'll just take this a step out of time. There's a few ayahs mentioned here as well. So we'll, we'll go through the verses first. So the first verse is from Surah An-Nisa. That's mentioned here. We'll read the whole ayah. Worship Allah and join none with Him in worship. And do good to parents, kings for orphans and masakin. The neighbor who is near of kin, the neighbor who is, is a stranger, the companion by your side, the wayfarer you meet, and those slaves whom your right hand possesses. Very Allah does not like... Uh, does not like such as are proud and boastful. That's the whole ayah. But the starting of it is worship Allah and join none with Him in worship. So uh, that's what's been mentioned here. Then, if we go to the next ayah, and this is from Surah Al Bayna, uh, and we all be familiar with this, inshallah. So I'll read the translation home. And they were commanded not but that they should worship Allah and worship none but Him alone, abstaining from ascribing partners to Him. And perform a salat, ikam uh, salat, and give zakat, and that is the right religion. So that's the whole ayah. So we can see, uh, we can take the meanings from there. Then the next ayah here is from Surah Al Anbiya, verse 25. So if we go there and read the ayah, and we did not send any messengers before you, O Muhammad, وسلم, but we inspired him, saying, La ilaha illa ana, none has the right to be worshipped but I, Allah. So worship me alone and none else. So then the Shaykh um, uh, mentions uh, one more ayah from Surah Al... Uh, no, that, that's what we've read there. So then the Shaykh breaks down um, La ilaha illa ana from, from that ayah. As you can see here on the cursor, this bit here. So then the Shaykh says, La ilaha illa ana. And he says, in this, this part of that ayah, there are two affairs and he says in it is nafyu shirk and that basically means uh, negating shirk so when we say la ilaha illallah uh, in the first testification we in la ilaha illallah there is a um, affirmation and negation so in so it's the same thing here there's uh, we're negating any kind of shirk and we are affirming that all worship is for allah and nobody else. We're affirming that all worship is for Allah alone. But at the same time, we are negating everything else that people worship or what they do, anything on the planet, to, that we're negating it completely. And that's required. That's one of the conditions of La ilaha illallah as well, by the way, that we have to negate any kind of shirk. At the same time, we have to affirm that all worship is for Allah alone. <clears throat> so then we continue. Um, and the Shaykh. He says, وَقَالَ تَعَالَى وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ Surah Al-Isra وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ إِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ التَّعْبُودِ And that's from Surah Al-Nahl. 
قرن بين عبادة الله واجتناب الطاغوت لأن عبادة الله لأن عبادة الله لا تكون عبادة إلا ما اجتناب الطاغوت وهو شرك قال تعالى فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لم في صاملها So we'll go through this as well <coughs> So the Sheikh mentions an ayah this, at the beginning So if you go to Surah Al-Isra This is a verse from Surah Al-Isra Isra Verse 23 And your Lord has decreed that you worship none but him So that's the starting of the ayah So we'll, we'll just stop there So it's in, in terms of keeping in context with what we're reading And your Lord has decreed that you worship none but him And then the next ayah is from Surah An-Nahl, verse 32, I believe. Or verse 36. Verse 36. And if you read the translation of this, then it is, And verily we have sent among every ummah, community, nation, a messenger proclaiming, Worship Allah alone and avoid or keep away from Taghut, all false deities, etc. I do not worship Taghut besides Allah. So that's the beginning of the ayah. And so what's connected between uh, what we're reading here is that, um, that what's connected between the worship of Allah and... So you can see that what's connected here. I think the easiest way to say this is that what we're reading here is we're seeing the negation of everything other than Allah that, should, that is worship. We negate all of that and there's affirmation of worshipping Allah alone with no partners, associating no partners with Him in worship. And the Sheikh says, because uh, the worship of Allah, it isn't worship except that we uh, uh, stay clear from any type of Dawood, so any type of false deity, whatever it may be, whether it's a stone, some tomb, some grave, um, some stick, tree, whatever it is, that uh, worshipping Allah is only worshipping Allah When you are doing it, when you are worshiping, uh, worshiping Allah upon Tawheed, meaning that uh, you uh, worship Allah alone and don't associate any partners with Him, and at the same time you have that you have that belief uh, from your shahada, la, uh, from your shahada, la ilaha illallah, uh, that you worship Allah alone and affirm all worship for Him is for Him alone, and that anything else is negated. So then the Shaykh continues and says. Um, And he mentions here, yeah, he says, and Al-Taghut, obviously false deities, this is shirk. This is, he says it's shirk. And then he mentions another ayah, a couple of ayahs, uh, another ayah that we read here. So if we go to Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 256, I believe here. Yeah. Verse 256, which we read in Arabic. If we read that, the translation, there is no compulsion religion. So this is the beginning. Or we'll just read the whole ayah. There is no compulsion religion. Rarely the right path has become distinct from the wrong path. Whoever disbelieves in Ta'ud and believes in Allah, then he has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that will never break. And Allah is the all-hearer, the all-knower. So that's quite clear as well with what we're talking about, what the Shaykh is mentioning to us. So let's continue. So the Shaykh says, um, فَالْإِمَانُ بِاللَّهِ لَا يَكْفِي إِلَّا مَا الْكُفْرِ بِالْتَاغُوتِ وَإِلَّا فالمشركون يؤمنون فالمشركون يؤمنون بالله لكنهم يشركون به وما يؤمن أكثرهم بالله إلا وهم مشركون بين بين سبحانه أن عندهم إيمان بالله ولكن يفسدونه بالشرك والعياد بالله والعياد بالله. so the sheikh here mentions he says and Having Iman or belief in Allah is not sufficient except that we um, disbelieve everything else besides Allah. So uh, on one hand, um, we, we believe in Allah and He is the one and sole Lord of the whole entire universe and everything. And there is no partner besides Him. So we affirm that. But at the same time, we then... Um, Disavow everything else So that he has no equal There is nobody else There is nothing else So it's what we're carrying on From what the Sheikh's mentioned Because the Sheikh mentioned He goes if, if you don't then 
if you don't believe and if if we don't affirm and negate then the problem is that the mushrikun the polytheists they believe in allah however they associate partners with him as well and then he mentions uh, he quotes an ayah here so we should read that as well uh, from surah to yusuf so let's go to surah to yusuf verse 106 verse 106 and most of them believe not in allah except that they attribute partners unto him i.e they are mushrikun polytheists so that see so so we have to to be a muwahid to be upon tawhid to be upon the tawhid of allah there has to be affirmation in worshiping Allah alone and directing all of all worship uh, that Allah deserves all worship and at the same time negating everything else any other deity whatever it may be negating it and that's the muwahid otherwise you fall in the category of the polities because then you'd, you'd have the belief of the polities if you if you didn't negate uh, the false deities and then the sheikh uh, uh, mentions he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ta'ala clarified uh, 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 this, uh, you, you know, is, is being clarified in the Iman Billah that uh, having uh, Iman uh, in Allah, um, uh, that these uh, Mushrikun, uh, that uh, they had Iman in Allah, these polytheists they had Iman, they, they had belief in Allah, however, they corrupted their belief with Shirk. So that, that's the difference there. Then the Shaykh continues, he says, Hada ma'na qawlu Shaykh an man. عبد الله وعطاء الرسول فإنه لا يشرك بالله شيئا لأن الله لا يرضى أن يشرك ما هو أحد في بادته. So then he summarizes here and the Sheikh says and the meaning here of, the, of what the Sheikh the original author is uh, you know um, what he intends here is that whoever worships Allah and obeys the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, and does not uh, 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 for indeed uh, he does not um, um, associate partners with Allah anything with Allah doesn't associate any kind of partner anything with Allah then uh, yeah and, and that's what he means basically so not associating partners with Allah and worshipping Allah alone and directing all of his worship to Allah alone purely for his face uh, and seeking his reward and at the same time uh, following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi commands as well and um uh, and, and not committing shirk, and, and, and that's what's meant here, and that's what the shirk has been clarifying to us. And then he, he, he finishes off this paragraph by saying that um, because Allah is not pleased with the one who uh, associate, pa associates partners with him in worship, in his worship. So then we continue to a new paragraph now. قال صلى الله عليه وسلم فيما يرويه عن ربه عز وجل قال الله تعالى أنا أغنى شركاء عن الشرك من عمل عملا أشرك فيه ما يغيري تركته وشركه هناك قوم يصلون ويشهدون أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله ويقترون من ذلك ويصومون ويحجون لكنهم يدعون الأضرحة ويعبدون الحسن والحسين والبدوي وفلان وعيلان ويستغيثون بالأموات هؤلاء إبادتهم باطلة لأنهم يشركون بالله عز وجل يخلطون ويخلطون الإبادة بالشرك فعملهم باطل حابط حتى يوحد الله عز وجل ويخلص له لبادة ويترك إبادة ما سواه. so um, uh, the sheikh then mentions here uh, a hadith al Qudusi uh, as well for us. Uh, so he says the Prophet صلى الله عليه that 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 which was narrated uh, on the authority of the Prophet صلى الله عليه directly from his Lord. <coughs> and he mentions here that Allah said. To the Prophet ﷺ, I am the most free of wanting any partners. So whoever uh, does an action or carries out a deed where he asso associates a, a, in his worship somebody else or something else with me, I have left, I've left, I've, I have left him and his shirk that he did. 
So that's very strong statement directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a hadith, a hadith Qudusi here that shows us uh, the brevity of the matter. It's a big issue and every Muslim should know uh, what constitutes shirk and what doesn't to safeguard himself and to save himself from falling into any, any, any of the very many pits that are there, especially if we are ignorant of uh, the single most important matter in our deen which is to worship Allah alone um, and direct all of our worship to Him alone. But how do we do that? We can only do that if we also know what the pitfalls are. So we need to know what shirk is. And this is what we're learning here. So the shaykh continues and he says, um, he also mentions here that, for example, he, he goes into a bit more detail. So he says, you, uh, he says, there are people who pray. There are people who testify. They say, La ilaha illallah. And they say, Anna Muhammadun Rasulullah And they increase in, You know in all of these things They increase in that You know they pray a lot And they say La ilaha illallah So many times And say Anna Muhammadun Rasulullah They say all the time You know they fast They they they, they make the pilgrimage To Makkah um, However They also supplicate And direct their worship to These tombs And these raised graves And, uh, and the likes of that They worship for example, there are some of the people, uh, and uh, the, the, uh, and this is just a few examples. It's not exhaustive, um, but it's enough for us to understand. For example, there are people also that they worship uh, Al Hassan, they'll worship Al Hussein, they'll worship uh, some some Bedouin um, uh, uh, because of superstitions. Uh, they'll um, they'll uh, they'll worship uh, so and so and forth, Fulan, you know, anybody. Where a story or some kind of story is crept in, and people say, "Oh, you can, you know, get baraka from here, and you could, you know, if you go here and if you do this X, Y, and Z, you know, you can, you can, you know, intercede with this, but all this kind of, all this kind of stuff." The sheikh will expand on it. So then, uh, uh, for example, people also will uh, try to seek aid from the dead people as well. So whoever's dead, they'll go to the graves or wherever, uh, and they will um, seek aid from the dead. So the Sheikh says, these types of people, their worship is falsified, is nullified. Because why? It's clear to us now. Because they are associating their worship with Allah, with other than Allah. They're associating, they're associating their worship with other than Allah. It's not purely for Allah alone. They're, they're mixing it by sharing it with these other people, whether it's some dead person in a grave or whether it's some stick tree or stone, um, uh, etc. And some of the examples we mentioned earlier, the Sheikh mentioned to us. Um, and so they mix their worship, you know, and so it becomes adulterated uh, and falsified and is not accepted. And then by committing shirk al here, uh, as we mentioned earlier, big problem because whatever good deeds that they actually did do and they were accepted, they're wiped clean. The slate is wiped clean in a bad way because then they start from the beginning again, even that's if they realized what they've done. So the Sheikh uh, finishes this paragraph and he says, so therefore it's important that um, uh, we leave off shirk, we stay away from it, know the pitfalls, and also that we, we, we uh, that our worship is, is for Allah alone and nobody else. And the Sheikh continues, so he continues on and he says, وَإِلَّا فَإِنَّهُمْ لَيْسُوا عَلَى شَيْءٍ فَيَجِبُوا التَّنَبُّهُ لِهَذَا لِأَنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَرْضَى أَنْ يُشْرَكَ مَعُمْ فِي بَادَةِ أَحَدٌ كَائِنٌ مَنْ كَانَ لا يرضى سبحانه بمشاركة أحد مهما كان لإن لا يقول أحد أنا أتخذ من الأولياء الصالحين والطيبين شفاعة أنا لا أعبد الأصنام والأوثان كما هو في الجاهلية أنا أتخذ هؤلاء شفاعة لا أعبدهم فنقول له هذه مقالة الجاهلية اتخذوهم شفعاء عند الله لأنهم صالحون وأولياء من أولياء الله والله لا يرضى بهذا. So then the Sheikh continues and says he goes. Uh, so you know if you don't um, you know purify your worship, then accept that then you're not upon anything. You're not upon anything as mentioned before that all of your deeds will be erased, erased to zero when you uh, fall into shirk and commit shirk. Al-Akbar like this that we're talking about here. So he says, so the Sheikh says it's important to pay attention then to this because Allah is not pleased that anybody um, 
any of his servants um, and slaves associate partners in worship with him, alongside him, however it may be. He's not pleased with it, that anybody, uh, you know, share his worship with somebody else, you know, share Allah's worship with somebody else. And then the Sheikh mentioned some examples where people say, oh, well, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm taking, you know, I'm not worshipping, uh, uh, I'm not, uh, you know, committing shirk and worshipping this person. I'm only doing it to seek intercession from the Salihin, from the righteous or the pure people, you know, or the uh, awliya of Allah, you know, for example. Uh, but the Sheikh says here that this is uh, false, falsified and that, we say to this kind of person who says, oh, no, I'm not worshipping them. I'm just uh, using them as an intercession, intercessor and I'm seeking from them intercession. He says that this kind of speech is ignorance um, and that this is not accepted uh, even even if they are uh, seeking intercession uh, from a righteous person or uh, from the Oliya of Allah. Allah is not pleased with this because it's obviously shirk, as we mentioned. So the Shaykh continues and he says, قوله, لا ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل الملك المقرب هو أفضل الملائكة مثل جبريل مثل جبريل عليه السلام وحملة العرش ومن, ومن حوله أو من حوله والملائكة المقربون من الله سبحانه وتعالى فما قرب المكان من الله عز وجل وقرب الإبادة والمكان إن الله لو أشركهم أحد ما الله فيه الإبادة فإن الله لا يرضى بأن, بأن يشرك معه ملك مقرب ولا نبي مرسل محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ودليل قوله تعالى وأن المساجد لله فلا تدعو مع الله أحدا <تصفيق> وعيسى ونوه وإبراهيم أولو العزم لا يرضى أن يشرك معه أحد ولو كان من أفضل الملائكة ولو كان من أفضل البشر um, So then the Sheikh moves on and he mentions um, in bold here the original author's text so continuing from there and then he explains uh, in more detail uh, to take the extract the benefits from there, so he says his speech. Or he's saying, um, not a angel that's close, like close to Allah, not an angel that's close to Allah, and nor a uh, a messenger, not a prophet or messenger. So then the Sheikh mentions. He says here that uh, what's being uh, the intention here is that um, even if it is. Um, you know, an angel that's close to Allah. For example, give us an example. For example, Jibreel alayhi salam. Oh, the angel that uh, carries uh, the arsh of Allah. And, th and those angels are around that particular angel, for example. And, and in general, uh, the angels that are close to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the Sheikh mentioned, so, and then he said, he continues and he says, so if somebody, uh, you know, committed shirk in an associate uh, partner's these particular examples here with Allah, then therefore this is not accepted either. Allah is not pleased with this either. So just striking different examples in more detail. And, and then he goes on to mentioning, which you mentioned earlier as well, about uh, a prophet that sent to a nation, nor from the people as well, like the prophets. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Isa wa Nuh wa Ibrahim Ulil Azm And um, uh, 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 Ulil Azm Here You might hear in other places It's it's the The greatest of the Prophets The ones who are the ones who have The greatest maqam Or station uh, With Allah And that is our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Isa Wa Nuh And Ibrahim um, These are the Ulul Azm so it's good uh, to know that as extra benefit. And the Sheikh mentions that that Allah is not pleased even with this. These are just extra examples. We've understood that we know now. It's clarified to us, but this is just extra benefits now. These are all the uh, the extra benefits here. That even if it's a prophet or or, or a, a close angel to Allah, no, it's still not accepted. It's not a shirk. 
Uh, and the evidence uh, which was mentioned here, you can see the evidence here is from Surah Al-Jinn, verse uh, 18. Um, so basically that, that the masajid, the, the places of prostration and the masajid as we know them, the mosques and the places of worship or the prostration um, are for Allah. So don't call upon anybody else besides Allah. So very clear. That's absolutely clear. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, فَهُوَ لَا يَرْضَى أَنْ يُشْرَكَ مَاهُ أَحَدْ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَلَا مِنَ الرُّسُلِ فَكَيْفَ بِغَيْدِهِمْ مِنَ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ وَصَالِحِينَ فَغَيْرُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ فَغَيْرُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالرُّسُلِ مِنْ بَابِ الْأَوْلَى أَنْ لَا يَرْضَى اللَّهُ بِإِشْرَاكِهِمْ مَاهُ فِي الْإِبَادَةِ وَهَذَا رَدٌ عَلَى أُولَئِكَ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ يَزُمُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يَتَّقِذُونَ صَالِحِينَ وَالْأَوْلِيَاءِ شُفَعَاءَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ لِيُقَرِّبُوهُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ زُلْفَى كما قال أهل الجاهلية ما نعبدهم ما نعبدهم إلا ليقربونا إلى الله زلفا وإلا فهم وإلا فهم يعتقدون أن هؤلاء لا يخلقون ولا يرزقون ولا يملكون موت ولا حياة ولا نشورة وإنما قصدهم التوسط in the Allah Azza wa Jal wa lithalika sarafu lahum shay'an min al-ibadati taqarruban ilayhim zabahu lil-qubur wa nadharu lil-qubur wa staghathu wa hatafu bil-amwad So the Shaykh here, he continues and says, so Allah is not pleased with anybody associating partners in worship with him and that's shirk. But there it is. Uh, whether it be um, an a, a close angel, an angel that's close in station or in f physicality, or um, a messenger that was sent to the nations, uh, or prophet messenger. So then the Sheikh says, "So, so what about so, so uh, what about other than them then? If they are, if if they're being prohibited, clearly prohibited from being, you know, sharing in worship with Allah, then what about other people who are less than them in degree?" In station and you know, uh, in that in that matter, and, and so the for example, he says like for example, the only of Allah and the righteous people who are actually below them, they are below the uh, the level of uh, um, uh, these angels and the prophets and messengers, aren't they? Uh, so then uh, the Sheikh just mentioned that this is from just understanding um, uh, uh, the differences here and clarifying uh, shirk and what it is. And then the Shaykh continues and he, he mentions, so he says, uh, and this is also a refutation and a rebuttal upon those who uh, think uh, um, or say uh, that all they're doing is is that they're just taking these righteous people and the all they are as, inter intercession, inter uh, as uh, intercessors between them and Allah to, uh, to, and they're using them as a middleman, so to speak. Somebody in the middle to help them bring themselves closer to Allah. And then there's an ayah that we, meant, uh, that we read here, which if we look at uh, the uh, translation, it will also help us as well understand from Surah Al-Zumar, verse 3. So if we quickly go there, verse 3, we read that, Surely the religion, uh, surely the religion, i.e. the worship and the obedience is for Allah only, and those who take all the protectors and helpers besides him say, we worship them only that they may bring us near to Allah. So we can see that. And then the rest of the ayah, let's read the rest of the ayah. Ver Verily, Allah will judge between them concerning that wherein they differ. Truly, Allah guides not him who is a liar and a disbeliever. So we can see there um, uh, what the Shaykh was mentioning. And we'll continue. There's further clarification. And and the Shaykh then says, and uh, these people, all they're doing, what they're saying is they believe that, um, uh, um, that all they're doing is they're using them as in intercessors, uh, as middle people, in the middle to help them get close to Allah because they're the righteous people. You know, they're from the Holy of Allah, for example. And so we, we need them, uh, uh, you know, and we, we, uh, we can't seek nearness to Allah and become close to Allah without them. These are their false beliefs. Rather, we know it's clear that if you want to get closer to Allah, there's a direct link to Allah. You pray, you know, you increase in uh, your ibadah, you know, uh, as we're doing, for example, here, we're learning lesson, we're learning knowledge. You know, there's a, n a number of things which we mentioned in previous books as well uh, that we go about doing to get closer to Allah. There's no need for a middle person and it's shirk. Um, and 
And then the Sheikh mentions regarding these people, even though they knew, like he's talking about this ayah here, talking about the mushrikun now, that even though they uh, they believed that um, that these things that they used as middlemen, nor could they create anything, nor could they provide, nor did you know they had, they had any kind of you know ownership of anything over over uh, who dies and you know who to bring to life and who they, they you know they didn't have this. This is from. Uh, Allah's attributes, aren't they? Yeah. So uh, this is just a contrast here. And so the Shaykh mentioned. So their point was that they use these people just as a, as a middle, as a middle person, like a like a bridge, like a stepping stone to Allah, which obviously uh, is not from the Deen of Allah. But they created this and did this, and it comes under Shirk. So they also did other things. So they they would go ahead and they would sacrifice to these people and to these things. So the, these all so-called olia and so-called um, uh, righteous people or pure people, they would uh, sacrifice to them. Right? It's act of worship, sacrifice. They, so they're committing shirk. They would also take oaths by their name and 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 and, and uh, uh, by their um, uh, graves. They would seek aid. And they would call out in loud voices their names, you know, calling out to the dead. So all of this is shirk akbar. The greater shirk, the one that we're discussing here that nullifies all of your deeds. <clears throat> and takes you out of the fold of Islam. <clears throat> so then the shaykh continues and he says, لا يرضى الله بمشاركة أحد كائن من كان وهذا صريح في القرآن والسنة لكن لمن يأكل ويتدبر ila <laughs> لعن من فعل ذلك وأخبر أن هذا هو فعل اليهود والنصارى ونهانا عن ذلك في آخر حياته وهو في في سكرات الموت عليه الصلاة والسلام بقوله ألا إن إن من كان قبلكم كانوا يتخذون القبور مساجد 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 هذا يقول وهو في سياق الموت ألا فلا تتخذ القبور مساجد فإني أنهاكم عن ذلك ويقول صلى الله عليه وسلم لعنة الله على اليهود والنصارى اتخذوا قبور أنبيائهم مساجد So that's quite a long paragraph. Let's just stop there for a second to help us understand what's being said here. So the Sheikh says, in mentions again, so Allah is not pleased uh, with associating partners with him and whoever it might be and whatever it might be uh, is, is, cl is clear to us now. And the Sheikh says that it's, it's made clear in the Quran and the Sunnah. But he says only made clear for uh, uh, in the Quran and Sunnah for, for the one who uh, has intellect and ponders over the meanings of the Quran, ponders over what's being said here. And that uh, he stays away from uh, blind following and the one who cuts out and Stays away from blind, uh, blind following, uh, and 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 those things that are and false, and that he pays attention, uh, and he and he pays and he pays attention to these things, and and, and then uh, the sheikh says, and the evidence for for what we're saying here uh, that Allah uh, is not pleased with anybody who commits uh, um, a shirk with him, associates partners in worship with him, whoever it may be, uh, is. Of what we read earlier on, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُمَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا and We've already mentioned this, so we'll carry on. Then the Shaykh says, he says, المساجد. So he gives a bit more explanation about masajid. Mosques are, um, uh, can also mean where you prostrate, prostrate uh, sujood. 
And so here he mentions, he says, Al-Musajid, the most, they are the houses of Allah. And they are, uh, it's a place that's been created for prayer. It's, the purpose of it is prayer. The point of it is, you know, praying. He also mentions what he says, and the best, uh, the, the, the best piece of land, right? Or the best piece of land or patch of land to Allah is a masjid, right? Uh, and it is, uh, and, and they are houses um, that um, Allah has permitted for his name to be mentioned and to be, you know, uh, raised. In that, you know, to be said and to be glorified, and it's obligatory that uh, that these uh, masajid are places for the worship of Allah alone, and the, for the worship of Allah alone. And it says, and that nothing happens in them from, uh, f uh, or, you know, uh, that that no, nothing happens in them for other than Allah. So these these the masajid are purely for the worship of Allah, and these these uh, and that we make sure uh, that we do not uh, build graves or tombs in these masajid. And he says because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam cursed whoever did this, or whoever does this, and whoever did this. And um, also was informed here. Um, about the actions of the Yehud and the Christians, or the Jews and the Christians, and we were pro, uh, and and these are from the actions of the Jews and Christians about building these tombs and these graves and all these and coming acts of shirk within uh, their places of worship, um, and also that we were uh, prohibited uh, from this. And and in his uh, in his latter part of his life, towards the end of his life, he warned us of this. To stay away from this And he was in You know He was Dying He was in a dying state And he warned us From this Alayhi salatu wasalam And he said That Indeed from those The likes of Indeed those people Who came before you They took their Graves As Places of prostration And also um, and, and was This is when He was saying this When he was almost dying It was the end stage and the Prophet ﷺ was warning us. He also said as well that um, uh, don't uh, take, do not take graves, do not take graves as places of prostration. For indeed, I have forbade you from doing this or doing that. So it's clear. He also said, وسلم, the curse of, may the curse of Allah be upon the Jews and the Christians. They took the graves of their prophets as places of prostration and worship and masajid as you mentioned here these are from al-bukhari and muslim you can see the references here for your own reference as well so the shaykh continues and he says فَالْ مَسَاجِدُ يَجِبُ أَنْ تُطَحِّرْ مَنْ مِنْ آثَارِ الشِّرْكِ تُطَحِّرْ مِنْ آثَارِ الشِّرْكِ تُطَحِّرْ مِنْ آثَارِ الشِّرْكِ وَالْوَثَنِيَّةِ وَأَنْ لَا تُقَامْ على على القبور أو يد يدفن فيها الأموات بعد بنائها بل تكون موات عبادة الله وحدة تقام فيها الصلاة ويذكر فيها اسم الله ويطلع فيها القرآن وتقام فيها الدروس النافعة ويأتقف ويؤتفك فيها للعبادة هذه هي وظيفة المساجد. So then the Sheikh mentions here. He says, so uh, the masajid, the mosques, uh, is obligatory that they are purified from any kind of trace of shirk. Any tra even if it's a trace, anything, it has to be purified from shirk. It has to be clear, clear of shirk, no shirk at all, any of this kind of thing. And idols and shirk, and any form of shirk. And that, and that uh, graves are not established. When then people are not buried in there as well from the dead after it has been built. Rather, he says, it sh there should be places of, uh, of worshipping Allah alone upon the Tawheed of Allah and that, is, uh, that, and that within them the prayer is established and within them uh, the dhikr of Allah is established and Allah is, you know, uh, uh, remembered within these places and that the Qur'an is... Um, uh, 
you know, read in, in, the, in the masjids. And the people read Quran in the masjid, the Quran. And also that the people uh, establish lessons within uh, the masjid to uh, share knowledge and to teach others. And that also that the masajid are used uh, for itikaf, for example, um, in Ramadan, when people uh, do itikaf uh, and uh, worship Allah. He's, so this is, is the Sheikh says this is the masjid. It was a, it was a, this is the role of the masjid. This is the role of the masjid. So we've nearly finished. We don't have much to go, so we'll 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 finish this uh, chapter, inshallah. So the Sheikh Kuchin says, "Amma an tuqam fiha awthan tuqbad min dun Allahi fahadi leisid masajid hadi mushahid shirk wa mushahid shirk." Wa in wa in samaha ahlaha masajid li an Allah yaqul wa an masajid li Allah ay la li ghayre wa li an al masajid hiya mahal ijtima' al nas wa tulaqihim fa yajib an takuna tahiratan min al shirk wa al bid' wa al khurafat li an al nas yatalaqawna fiha al ilm wa al ibadah fa idha wajadu fiha fi al masjid fi al masajid shay'an min al shirk wa al khurafat ta'athharu bi dhalika wa nashruhu fi al ard ويجب أن تكون المساجد مطهرة أو مطهرة من الشرك وأعظمها وأعظمها المسجد الحرام كما أمر الله جل وعلا بتطهيره قال تعالى وإذ بوأنا لإبراهيم مكان البيت أن لا تشرك بشيء لا تشرك بشيء وتطهر بيتي للطائفين والقائمين والركع السجود so then the Sheikh mentions here um, uh, that he says uh, as for um, establishing in these places or you know building uh, you know statues and uh, all these kinds of things that are related to shirk or committing acts of shirk uh, in uh, the masajid um, then these are not called masajid it doesn't matter if the people say oh this is a masjid it's not it's not it doesn't come under the definition really and the sheikh mentions why he says because allah says wa anna al masajid lillah he says and the uh, he says and the masajid are for allah alone they for allah alone so if we are if you if we, if all this other stuff is going on in there that's to do with shirk and, uh, and um, worship is being directed to others uh, and uh, these things are happening that are, are not connected to the religion and have no basis basis in the deen of Allah then it's not a masjid because it, it, because as we can go back to this ayah here that uh, here that the um uh, the that the masajid are for Allah alone uh, and other reasons as well, the Sheikh says, because says the masajid, they are the, the, uh, they are the places for a gathering, uh, you know, people gathering and the meeting, and also that is obligatory that uh, uh, the masajid are purified from shirk and religious innovation and superstitions, and um, that the people, you know, uh, he says because the people, you know, they uh, they uh, receive knowledge, they learn knowledge. Uh, in in them in in the, in the masajid and they worship Allah in these in these masajid. Uh, so if we find in these masajid a thing that's for of shirk or superstition or bid'ah, then you know it affects. Um, uh, then it obviously it affects the the people. You know, they, it affects the people negative way, uh, and 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 all of these things spread within uh, you know the the you know uh, you know on 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 the planet you know from that. From that place or whatever, it, whatever it may be happening, from these masajid. So, so it's obligatory upon uh, upon the masajid that they be purified from shirk. And the greatest of these masajid is the uh, is the masjid al Haram in Mecca. And uh, and the Sheikh says just like how Allah um, uh, Jalla Wala um, um, you know, commanded Ibrahim alayhi salam uh, of purifying masjid al Haram. And so we read the ayah earlier. So if we go to the translation, this is Surah Al-Hajj, verse 26. Surah Al-Hajj, verse 26. If we read that ayah, and remember when we showed Ibrahim 
the site of the sacred house, the Kaaba at Mecca, saying, Associate not anything in worship with me. La ilaha illa illallah. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, i.e. Islamic monotheism, and sanctify my house for those who circumambulate it and those who stand up for prayer and those who bow, submit themselves with humility and obedience to Allah and make prostration in prayer, etc. So we can see that it's clarified there. And so uh, the, the, the Shaykh says to us, uh, uh, was purify it from what? So the Shaykh asked the question to us, uh, what does it mean? Uh, was purify the masjid from what? He says from shirk and from religious innovation and from superstitions. He says, and, uh, and, uh, and, and also, uh, from the physical. So that's the uh, spiritual, uh, sort of, let's say, impurity, isn't it? Shirk, bid, all these things are from a spiritual point of view. You click, clear it, you, you clear that and purify the masjid from that. Also from the physical point of view of uh, dirt and impurities. Uh, as well So there's two meanings there That the Shaykh mentions So we continue The Shaykh mentions فَقَوْلُهُ تَعَلَىٰ لَا تَدْعُوا لَا نَاهِيَا So there's some grammar here um, um, I'll summarize as best as I can Basically um, When you see something like this لَا تَدْعُوا It's a command That don't uh, uh, Supplicate Or you know Call anybody else Allah saying this to us Don't call anybody else Don't associate Don't pray to Anybody else uh, You know uh, So uh, We've already gone through this. We won't go through the grammar here because it's not really suitable to be explained in English, to be honest. Uh, so we'll just leave this. So the Sheikh just mentions that, he mentions what we already mentioned earlier, um, that we don't call other people. We don't call upon other people. So, فَلَا تَدْعُوا Don't call upon other people except Allah. So, for example, the Sheikh mentions here, he says, don't seek aid from other people, like from dead people, or you know, other people that can't actually aid you. And I'll try to explain this in a bit of a better way because I think this will come afterwards, but I think it's worth mentioning now. You can seek aid from somebody. I'll give you an example. Somebody who is present and who is capable of that. Right? So, for example, if I asked um, a brother in the street, oh, help me with uh, pushing my car. I need to jump start it, for example. Okay, he's able, he's standing, he's there. I can ask him. I can ask aid. I, that's fine. That That aid is okay. But asking somebody... To do something that only Allah is capable of doing, then then it's not accepted. So the person, so if you ask, so for example, you can ask somebody for aid. Of course, you know, ask somebody for help. For example, are they present? Are they capable? Are they alive? If those three conditions are not met, um, then uh, that you, you know you you can't seek aid from them. So for example, now in contrast to that, what the Sheikh's mentioned here as well, going to a grave. So if you go to a grave now or mention a dead person, oh, please help me, so and so. First of all, he's not capable, he's dead. He's not, he's incapable. You know, he's not alive. Right, he's not alive. You might be, uh, he might be present because you might be there with grave. Then you might be in another place where this person isn't present. So you're on your own now in your room and you call upon somebody or whatever it might be, whether it's a tree or anything, whatever, or, or it's uh, somebody. Uh, you know that to be righteous You call upon the person They're not there They're not capable And They're not uh, uh, You know uh, uh, They may be alive Let's say Or they may not be alive But these conditions are not met So like for example Asking somebody to uh, Saying oh You know Enter me into Jannah For example You ask somebody Oh You're righteous Or whatever uh, You know uh, You know Enter me into Jannah For example You know There's loads of examples we will come All the, all the other examples Will come inshallah uh, but we get the gist of what's being said here. So, for example, you know, saying the likes of Ya Muhammad, uh, Ya Abdul Qadir, and, you know, calling upon other people, even the Prophet Sallallahu like this. And the Sheikh mentioned this earlier on about the close angels and and from the Prophet well, all of this is shirk, calling upon them. And they are dead. As in the, uh, the, the, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu uh, for example, passed away. He's not in this dunya anymore. Um, and neither are any of the prophets and messengers. Right? For example, here. <clears throat> and same with the example that the, the uh, Sheikh gave anyway. Sharing any kind of worship with anybody else, whether they're alive or dead, is shirk as well. So it's clarified. So here again, uh, just this paragraph here is just mentioning more grammar. And what it means is that because uh, Ahad has been mentioned without the Alif and Lam, so it's 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 general. It means that it covers everything and anything. 
So don't call, don't call upon anybody except Allah. So it covers everything. Right? And that's what it means here. Um, so then the Shaykh continues and he mentions again the same ayah that went, فَلَا تَدْوُمَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا So uh, we've already, ex- this has been already explained. So we'll, we'll, we'll leave this now. Um, and um, the Shaykh has mentioned a few things that have been repeated earlier or mentioned earlier and repeated again. So um, we'll just stop here that we've covered the whole topic, uh, inshallah. And we'll start uh, the new topic, Al-Wala Wal-Bara, from next week, Bidin Lai Ta'ala. Subhanakullah wa bihamdik, Ashadu an la ilaha ilanta wa astaghfiruka wa tubu ilayka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.